Well, we are really uh, experiencing a lot of things coming back into the fold and things happening uh, after the uh, pandemic, uh, the strung out long ending of the pandemic. And uh, it's it's nice because we've got uh, lots of choices for things to do, see, and uh, and go, and support. And one of those places is uh, our gem right here in Sharon, Connecticut, and that is the Sharon Audubon Center. And uh, we have uh, the education program manager uh, for Sharon Audubon, Wendy Miller, with us again this morning. Wendy, good morning. Good morning, Marshall. Nice morning. It's a little chilly from yesterday, but a nice morning. <laughs> Yeah, um, but but it's nice. Fall is here, so it's, it's a nice nice change of pace, I think. And we should have nice color on the on the trees because we've had enough rain, and we have not too many have been blown off yet. So it should be really a spectacular fall if everything stays in place. And uh, of course, uh, we'll talk about spectacular fall. We'll talk about uh, the properties of Sharon Audubon, especially uh, on Route Four, uh, heading out of town, the Sharon Audubon Center. Uh, first thing I want to talk about, though, and uh, that is uh, the event that is going on through October 16th, and that is your bird seed sale. Right, yeah. We're doing a pre-order bird seed sale. Unfortunately, our, our main building is still closed to the public um, because of COVID, but our trails, our grounds remain open daily from dawn to dusk. But um, even last winter when we were closed, we still continued to sell seed and bird feeders um, when people call in, and then we would arrange pickups because everybody loves to feed the birds. So <laughs> who doesn't, you know? So um, we wanted to make sure that our quality seed was available for those who wanted to to fill their bird feeders and watch the birds. So we are doing a pre-order sale since we're not open, you know, to the public on a regular basis. So we do have um, our quality bird seed in this pre-order sale is 20% off regular prices, but you have to do pre-order. Um, and it runs now through October 16th. And then pickup will be on Saturday, November 13th here at the center. So you drive in through the circle. It'll be contactless pickup. Um, a staff member will put the seed that you ordered into your car, and then you're good to go. Um, so orders are due, like I said, October 16th with pickup on November 13th between 10 and 1 here at the Audubon Center. Now, how do most people order? Do they, do they, I mean, uh, do, they, do they try to order to get through the winter? Is it a really huge order or, or, or is it just a normal order? I was, because, you know, there's so many. My mother used to feed the birds 12 months a year. Uh, mm -hmm. She did. It didn't matter if there was snow outside. Uh, she would clean out uh, her, 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 her bird bath and then make sure there was fresh water every day. And uh, So how, how do people purchase? Did they, did they buy a lot at one time? Is it like bulk buying? I think it kind of depends on the person and how much seed they go through. If they have a bird feeding area where they you know, will fill their feeders and the birds clean them out within a day, then, then certainly a lot of people do stock up. Um, and if you do the pre-order and you happen to run out, we will continue to sell seed here at the center throughout the fall and winter. Uh, just it would be back at regular prices, not the 20% off. So this gives people a chance to stock up if they wish. Um, but maybe people don't have the, the space to hold, you know, 50 pounds, 50 bags of, of 20 pound, you know, bird seeds. So, um, so I think it's up to the individual and if they have a place to store it. And some people do feed the birds year-round. Um, birds will definitely go to natural food sources before they come to bird feeders. So it's kind of a myth that they become dependent on the bird feeders. They're always going to choose natural food over coming to the feeders. But, of course, fall and winter are the, the time where most people are filling their feeders. All right. And uh, let's go over the uh, the rules again uh, That uh, yeah. with the pandemic rules, first of all, for Sharon Audubon, because uh, there's so many different rules now from so many different places. Uh, do, you see no. your, do you see yourself coming out of, uh, out of uh, well, first, what rules are in place right now for the entire center for people that want to go? Well, when it, like I said, our center building is still closed because yeah. um, we do have to follow Audubon guidelines as well and so our, our building is actually closed but we are continuing to do some public programs um, I'm doing school programs I'm going out to the schools and um, teaching outside um, because just like everybody else schools have different rules too with having guests in and out of the actual buildings um, but we have some school trips coming here for field trips we're doing public programs um, we have a couple of um, events coming up like this bird seed and sale, and then the, a pumpkin trail. Um, 
So uh, people are welcome to come and enjoy the grounds. We have about 11 miles of hiking trails here. Uh, of course, people can visit the birds at the aviaries. Uh, we still have gardens that, that look nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's, there are things to do here, and we're still out in the community and teaching programs. It's just that our building is, is closed. All right. Now, I noticed on your website, uh, mm-hmm. uh, wanting to volunteer, attend our virtual open house mm-hmm. on yeah. Thursday, October 4th. Let's talk about the open house, the virtual open house. Yeah, so Bethany Sheffer is our volunteer coordinator, and so she put this together. And, um, you know, we have lots of volunteer opportunities. It's not at 100% capacity right now, again, because of COVID and because um, we can't allow a lot of people into our building at one time. But we do have opportunities, and we want to talk to people about them and, and make them aware of what we have available. So anything from um, trail maintenance, if you'd like to come in and hike the trails and um, you know, you can, we're welcome people who want to just kind of trim back if there's an area that needs trimmed back or um, someone who likes to mow lawns or pull invasive species. Uh, we also need uh, volunteers to help take care of our resident birds, our raptors, our, our reptiles. We have various turtles and snakes um, that need to be fed and, and their cages cleaned and everything. Uh, rehab volunteers in our rehab clinic. So we have a lot of different um, areas for volunteers, and we just want to have people aware of what our needs are. So that's what the open house is. All right, and for once again, you folks, uh, the open house is a virtual open house at Sharon Audubon Thursday, mm-hmm. October 14th at 6.30. Of course, if you want more information, uh, Sharon.Audubon uh, is, is, is the website to go. They also have a Facebook page. Now, let's talk a little bit. We're speaking once again uh with Wendy Miller of Sharon Audubon, the Pumpkin Trail. Uh, now that is that runs uh, what, October 20th through November 11th. Let's talk a little more, more detail about the Pumpkin Trail. Yeah, so we started that last year. It was just an idea that we had uh, because we didn't do our annual Audubon Kids Day again because of COVID. <laughs> I wish this would just go away, right? Um, so we wanted to still provide something for our community and get people outdoors. So we, we started a pumpkin trail, and we invited members of the community, everybody, um, kids, adults, anyone who wanted to do it could carve or decorate a pumpkin or two or as many as they wanted and then submit them. It was free. Uh, and then we lined all those jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins along our maple trail and around our main grounds. And then uh, our visitors could come and, and walk the trail and just see all the, the pumpkins that were submitted. Uh, and then we had a couple of nighttime viewing events. So we went through and we lit all the candles um, so people could see them in the dark. And it was really well received. We had a I think we had a pretty good turnout for our first year, and it was kind of last minute last year trying to think of something we could do in, in place of the Audubon Kids Day. So we're hoping to do that again and make it a little bit bigger and better each year, um, have more participation from the community. Uh, we're partnering uh, with Paley's Farm Market here in town, and so people can get a $2 off coupon for a carving pumpkin um, down at Paley's that they can then carve and then submit into our pumpkin trail. And... Um, there are two nighttime viewing against, uh, events again this year. So the trail is open daily from October 28th to November 11th. So anybody can come in, hike the trail whenever they want and see the pumpkins. But if you want to see them lit up at night, we're going to be doing that October 29th and October 30th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. So families can come, bring a flashlight for the trail, and see those pumpkins all lit up. We'll have hot chocolate, um, We'll have some of our enchanted forest animals, our character animals here for the kids to interact with, and um, just a nice evening or two <laughs> to walk through and see those animals out in nature while you're on the trails too. And the trail is uh, it, the trail uh, is it is it handicapped accessible? Can uh, it, it looks kind of flat to me. It's kind of flat. Um, I, I don't. It's not really considered handicapped accessible. Okay. Um, you know, through the ADA or anything, but it is probably our flattest trail. So it would be possible to push a stroller or a wheelchair through. There just might be a few uh, rocks or a root sticking up along the way, but, um, you know, they, they could be avoided. And then it just goes down our maple trail, which if anybody's been here in the sugaring season in March, uh, it's where the buckets line the trail. And it goes down our maple trail, and then it just kind of loops back around to the front lawn area. 
through the meadow. So now, is there, is it's, there, it's fairly flat. Is there a way of people to register to make a, to do a pumpkin? Uh, is there an entry form, or did they? Uh, how does that work? Yeah, there are entry forms. So if you go to our website, which is again Sharon dot org. Um, there will be the entry forms on there. They can also call the center or they can email me, uh, wendy.miller at audubon.org, and I can send them an entry form. Uh, it's on our Facebook page. <laughs> so it's around, and if you can't find it, just give us a call and, and let me know, and I can send one out. That is the Pumpkin Trail, which will be open daily uh, October 28th through November uh, 11th, but the special light at nighttime viewing events uh, October 29th and 30th from 7 until 8.30 in the evening. And uh, also they have their virtual open house uh, October 14th at 6.30. Uh, and uh, don't forget the bird seed sale. I mean, a lot going on as we head into the end of the fall there at Sharon Audubon. There is, and everything is on our website, or you can always call um, and leave a voicemail, and one of us will call you back or, or email us Um and there's also Viewer Choice Awards for the Pumpkin Trail, so you can vote for your favorites. And any child 12 and under who submits a carved pumpkin or a decorated pumpkin will also get a small uh, token, like a little prize for entering, um, just like we would do at Audubon Kids Day. Every kid would get at least one little prize. So we're trying to um, involve our community and the kids and, and everybody. So come out and come out and enjoy the pumpkin trail. That's sharon.audubon.org. Wendy, thanks a lot for joining us. And, You're very welcome. Uh, have a great fall. You too. Thanks, Take Marshall. Care. Yeah, bye-bye. Uh, Sharon Audubon, our own little gem right here.